Howdy. Radio was first commercialized around 1920. And ever since then, radio signals from our planet have been spreading out across our galaxy. It is possible that alien civilizations could detect these signals and learn that there is life on Earth. In the 90 years that the signals have been spreading at the speed of light, they have created a sphere with a radius of, well, 90 light years. To show an idea of the size of the sphere, I've indicated in the figure as a tiny white circle on an image of a spiral galaxy seen edge on. We do not have pictures of the Milky Way because we are inside. But anyway, so it's going to look a little bit like this. Uh, the center of the Milky Way is kind of over here. The sun is over here. And you know, maybe there's a a, a tiny sphere over there. Um, actually, not at not at scale. The distance between the sun and the center of the Milky Way is about eight thousand light years. Uh, light years. So ninety, you know, will be kind of the size of of the dot. So pretty tiny. Um, so far, we haven't received answering signals from aliens within this sphere. But as time goes on, the sphere will expand as suggested by the dash outline. So you know, it's going to just grow bigger. Reaching more and more stars that might harbor extraterrestrial life. Approximately what year will it be when the sphere has expanded to feel a volume 100 times greater than the volume it feels today in 2010. Okay, so problem is fairly easy. We have, um, this is a the sphere. I guess I can make it do something like this so that it looks more like a sphere. Um, there's gonna be a, a radius, right? So the radius, and I'm gonna call it radius in 2010. The radius in 2010 is um, 90 light years. So uh, the volume in 2010 is 4 thirds of pi uh, radius in 2010 cubed. And we want to know what is the radius when this volume is 100 times greater. So the volume of the sphere is going to be 4 thirds of pi. This new radius, and we're going to mark it, that we're interested in, cubed. And it's going to be equal to 100 times the volume in 2010. And so it's going to be 100 times times 4 thirds of pi radius in 2010 cubed. So we have the 4 thirds and the 4 thirds on both sides. We can get rid of them. We also have the pi's. And so we end up with. Um, uh, the radius that we're looking for is 100 times the radius cubed in 2010. And over here will be a cubed, but since we want the regular radius, which so is no exponent, we can um, take the, the cube root, right? So R cubed over three equals to this over three. And this three over three is just one, right? So the radius is gonna be 100 times 90 light years cubed to the one third. And the 
So I'm going to grab my calculator, 90 cubed is, I'll put it over here, what is this, 7.29, 100 times, times 10 to the five, light years cubed. To the one third. So this one times 100, it's uh, 7.29. You just add the two times 10 to the seven light years cubed to the one third. So taking one third. So the radius is 417.7 which we can round up and say it's 418 years, uh, sorry, light years. So initially we had light years cubed, but then we have this one third. So this is just light years, All right? So that is the radius of a sphere that is 100 times bigger in volume than the current volume you know, that the uh, radio signals have um, expanded into, into space. Approximately what year will it be when the sphere has uh, expanded to fill volume 100 times greater than the volume it fills today in 2010? This problem was written in 2010. So well, it's gonna be uh, started in 1920. And it's gonna take another 418 years. So that is 2338. I don't know if I should put the unit here, but you know, this is, um, I guess, in year, in uh, our year, you know, 2338 uh, is when this uh, volume is going to be 100 times uh, bigger. So um, maybe we will be detected by, by extraterrestrials. Um, it's kind of, difficult, uh, perhaps unlikely, because um, as the waves, you know, expand in a, in a sphere, the intensity of the wave decreases. So it might be very difficult to detect. Um, for example, right now we have uh, the Voyagers, right, that they just, uh, I guess, left the solar system, went into uh, interstellar, inter interstellar space. And I think it takes something like two days. So they're like uh, two light days away and already their signal is like extremely weak. So, you know, in, to detect signals from the stars that are created by civilization will be pretty tough. Uh, that being said, you know, we don't know what technology they might have. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say that the Earth and the Sun, obviously, uh, they are radiating in in most wavelengths, including um, radio wavelengths. So the difference between a natural uh, emitter, like a, like like the Sun, for example, of radio radio waves, and an artificial one, is that the sun emits like a continuous spectrum. 
And we humans, you know, we use TV stations or cell phones. And so it's a very narrow, uh, very narrow band. And in fact, that's how SETI, you know, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, the, um, the Institute at, at Berkeley, um, they, they look for narrow band um, uh, radio emissions. And you know, arguably they detected one, um, it was not SETI, it was another te radio telescope, but this year. So yeah, it's possible. It's coming from Alpha, from Proxima Centauri, which, has, which is the closest star to the sun. So it'll be pretty exciting if you know the closest star to our sun harbors life. We'll see. All right, thank you.